Hey channel, Fernando from SkyFi Audio. Today I've got in front of me a pair of integrated amplifiers from Macintosh uh, that are super, super good sellers for the line. Um, the MA252 and the MA352. In this video, I'm gonna spend not much, it's probably a 15 minute overview on features, functionality, and who it's for and why you'd buy this over one of their more conventional uh, designs. So hang on in there, I'm gonna jump right in and give me about 15 minutes. So an integrated amplifier is essentially a preamp and an amplifier all in one box. And they've become extremely popular over the last decade or so. So much that at any given time, if you come to our store, we only have two, three, maybe four pieces tops. They tend to go quickly once they come in, and especially the pieces from Macintosh. Um, we're talking about anything from the 80s, 90s, 2000s, 10s. Um, it all just comes and goes real fast. Why? Because um, it's, it's just a simpler way to get into a hi-fi. Uh, a lot of people will use it for a second system um, because it's less boxes, it's simpler to operate and set up. And there aren't a lot of sacrifices in uh, an integrated. It's not the top of the range, right? You want separates if you are going for an all-out system. But the convenience factor is just really great. Now, we've had a lot of models in here our absolute favorite model from macintosh is called the ma2275 it's a super rare piece or rare-ish uh, we've maybe had one or two over the last uh, five years which is essentially an mc275 all tubes uh, in a single chassis um, if you can find one of those go for it and as a matter of fact i did a video not that long ago on it when we had one uh, so i'm going to put a link in the description for you so you can check it out if you're interested now these pieces are hybrid uh, integrated amplifiers, meaning they're not tubes, they're not solid state, they're actually both in one box. The front end, the preamp stage, as you can see by these little tubes here in front, is driven by tubes, while the output stage is driven by transistors, more of a conventional amplifier. Um, so Macintosh believes, and a lot of people would agree, that that's a way to go uh, when you can. And I don't think that's wrong. Um, I've configured a lot of systems over the years where I will take a really good high-end uh, Macintosh amplifier like an MC452 and then combine it with a tube preamp stage, a C50, I'm sorry, a C2500, a C2300, even the top of the line and a C1100 or C12000. So I loved combining tubes with solid state amplifiers and that's what they've done for the integrated and it's uh, it's not uncommon, but it's uh, for Macintosh, it's something of recent. They haven't really had uh, this combination in a while. Now, I believe both of these use the same technology for the front end, which is a pair of 12 AX7s and a 12, pair of 12 AT7s, which is very common in the world of preamps. And that's the little tubes that I mentioned here in front. As you can see, the comp same tube complement on both units. Now the output side is something called the direct coupled amplifier and that's important to understand and that's one of the first sacrifices on both of these pieces is that the, it uses a conventional amplifier design like most other manufacturers do. They forego the you know, output transformers that some of the higher end Macintosh pieces have. So um, the output transformer setup starts around the MA7200 which is um, a little bit different and you can tell by the top of the box generally. If you see a smooth cover like that with heat sinks, that's generally a direct coupled amplifier. But if you see a bunch of transformers sitting in the front, one of them is typically the uh, high voltage power supply and the other one is typically the output transformers, which gives you some of that, you know, sound that Macintosh fans love. So although this does not have it, it'd be kind of inconvenient in this case size and in this price range to have output transformers. Uh, you are give um, up a little bit not having them. And to be clear, direct coupled means that the output transistors or the output circuitry is wired directly to your speakers versus uh, autoformers or output transformers in which there is a transformer sitting before between the output stages and your speakers. Um, so this is what they call hybrid drive, hybrid drive. Um, so uh, tube front end and solid state on the back. Um, now I'm going to go one by one and talk about the features. And first of all, sorry for the glare. I mean, this highly polished surfaces on the Mac pieces is really hard to um, to film without picking up a ton of reflections. Um, you know, it's highly polished stainless steel chassis, and then they use glass in the front. So it's about as bad as it gets in terms of video quality. But hopefully, you can see well enough 
uh, what we're talking about. So I'm going to go and talk about the features of the 252 first, which is the starting point. So hybrid drive, um, it does have a moving magnet input, so you can hook up a basic turntable. We're talking about moving magnet cartridges. Uh, if this will not handle a moving coil cartridge unless it's a high output moving coil, which there are a bunch. We here at SkyFi sell a ton of uh, Sumiko cartridges, and nowadays they've got them in both high output and low output moving coils, so that is a really nice sacrifice. So you're not giving up a lot by having just a moving magnet input. Um, it's got these really cool heat sinks that Macintosh has patented where they've sort of monogrammed their logo. You can kind of see the MC right here into the shape of the heat sink. I'm sure that does some sort of magic they're claiming, but it's really just a heat sink that looks really cool. Um, we've got a set of balanced inputs um, in the back, and I think two sets of RCA jacks, and I'll show you those in a little bit. In the front, we've got a really cool OLED display, as you can see there. Uh, you can go through the separate inputs just by turning the input knob here on the left. So you can go between two sets of RCA unbalanced, uh, then you've got the balanced input, there you go, and then you've got the phono. So really simple operation, and then on the right knob, you're controlling the volume. So as you can see, we're scrolling through the different volume up to 100. Um, real simple operation. Uh, these are push and hold buttons, so power is essentially just a quick push. And uh, the tubes will light up artificially orange. This is not the color generated by the tubes themselves. These are LEDs that are embedded into the base of the tube to signal to you that the tube is, in fact, warming up and it's not quite ready for operation. And you can see in the display it says tube warm up. Now they've gone green. Balances are input 25% is the last volume we used, or maybe the default, I'm not quite sure. We'll have to check that. Let me power off at 44 and back on. That'll tell us. Uh, it also has a pretty decent headphone amplifier here in the front. And we'll see now when we're out of tube warm up. Yeah, so it's your last known volume that it goes up to, which is good and bad. Uh, now let's take a look at the back. The back is pretty straightforward. We've got um, a single set of output taps for both 4 and 8 ohms. Um, left and right channels at the top here, which are these really nice gold-plated uh, five-way binding posts. Um, here is our phono input, including the ground connector, the two sets of balanced RCA inputs, a set of balanced inputs, a mono sub, which you have to be careful when using so that you don't... Um, Actually, this just hooks up to a, a, a mono subwoofer. So if you had a stereo subwoofer, you'd have to essentially use a, an RCA Y adapter for it. You've got power up control to connect other Macintosh devices and removable power cord and really not much else. So pretty, pretty straightforward. So what are you giving up in terms of this compared to, let's say, an MA7200? Well, the 7200 has a built-in DAC. There is no digital facilities on this unit whatsoever. You've given up the autoformers, and you've given up some moving coil features for the phono, but not much else. Oh, I forgot to mention, a power rating here is 100 watts at 8 ohms and 160 watts at 4 ohms. So pretty much good for most medium efficiency to high efficiency speakers. You will not be driving some difficult loads with this, and I don't suggest. And I don't think this is the kind of client that would buy this for anyway. Now, fortunately, the tube cages do come off. If you don't have cads or kids, um, you really don't need these tube cages. They're there to keep you from burning yourself or even breaking a tube, but these uh, AT7s don't really get that hot. I think it looks a lot better without them, and they do come off fairly, fairly easy. Moving on to the MA352, again with a hybrid drive, same setup with a direct coupled amplifier. We do pick up a five band graphic utilizer, which I love. Um, this allows you to essentially uh, extensively manipulate the uh, input signal. Uh, anywhere from 30 hertz to 10,000 hertz. So this is your bass, these are the highest frequencies, and you're able to kind of dial in and get a little bit extra out of your speakers. This is great if you've got, in particular, a set of vintage speakers where you want to get a little more on out of the bass or maybe a little bit more trouble out of those old tweeters. You can kind of just dial in the right amount of, uh, of tonality for you. So nice feature. It doesn't come on all the Macintosh pieces. I wish they did at this point. Um, but it, it seems to be pretty prevalent um, among a lot of the pieces, which we love to see, since here at SkyFi would do a lot of vintage setups, including vintage speakers. On the phono side, we've got the phone, same limitation as moving magnet only. Um, 
And um, on the input side, we've got an extra set of balanced inputs. So two sets of balanced inputs, and I think two or three R, um, RCA single end and then inputs. When we turn around the back, I'll sh uh, we'll confirm that. Now, both of these amplifiers have something called PowerGuard from Macintosh. That's something been present for in their pieces for years and years and years. It's essentially a circuitry that keeps you from blowing things up. It, man it monitors the input signal and it compares it to the output signal. And if it detects any sort of distortion in the signal path, it means something's not right and it will automatically lower the volume and keep you from blowing things up. And that's when things go bad, is when you send distortion to a speaker. That's generally what blows a speaker. It's not usually an overuse of power, but really um, bad power is what I call it. So this sort of um, power guard's been present for tons of years, and there's usually a light or two that will blink um, to show you that it's entered power guard when you push one of these amplifiers really hard. I think in this particular piece, they're using the color of the tubes to illustrate that. I'll have to confirm. It also has Sentry Monitor, uh, both of them do, which is the ability for this amplifier to detect a short on its output. Now, we repair a lot of amplifiers here at SkyFi, and a lot of the damage we see on amplifiers comes from misuse, meaning that someone at some point was messing around with the cables and managed to connect the outputs, the positive and negative outputs from the amplifiers, creating a short condition where the amplifier tries to deliver an infinite load and something blows. Usually an output transformer, I mean output transistor, some other device in the signal chain, or some fuses. Well, Macintosh does not want you to send back the amplifier every time you short something out, which is actually quite frequent. So this sentry monitor monitors the output, detects a short, and essentially kills the output, protecting the devices and yourself from damage. We've got the same heat sinks with the monogram, the initials uh, MC on on the extrusion, which is super cool. Uh, it's a direct couple amplifier, meaning no output transformers. And it's got a really nice high drive headphone amplifier. This is a, a key piece nowadays for, for these integrated amplifiers. Operation is very similar to the MA252, where we've got volume on the right, and we've got our inputs on the left. Here we're going to be able to go through them. Here we've got a moving magnet uh, phono input and the ability to dial in um, how many picofarads we want to match to the cartridge. This is a feature not available on the other one, I don't think. Uh, balance one, balance two, unbalance one, two, and three, and back to mon, to phono. Um, power, uh, to get to the balance, you actually push the input and you can go ahead and and use the volume control to mess with your balanced equalizer on. This is to bypass the actual EQ. Mono and stereo to switch between mono and stereo and then to manage our outputs. And the trim. The trim allows you to essentially line level match your inputs. If you've got, let's say, a turntable that's running a little hotter in volume than a CD player and you don't want to jump out of your seat every time you switch between the inputs, you can trim one of them down. Uh, ability to manage the lights in a dark room. You might not want all this glitter flashing at you. Uh, and same for the tube lights. And lastly, the display brightness. So pretty, pretty capable uh, and pretty feature rich. Now let's look at the back. A pretty simple setup in the back, just a few more inputs and outputs. Um, same setup for forward 8 ohm outputs on the speakers with the five-way binding posts. Uh, here are our three uh, unbalanced inputs. Here are two sets of balanced inputs, our phono connection, triggers, RS-232, and this USB port, don't get excited, is not for the DAC, that's just to service the unit and send it some new software. So pretty straightforward stuff in the back. A couple other features that I probably just went too fast over, it just does have dual subwoofer outputs, so you can connect left and right subwoofers, which is great, or a subwoofer that has dual inputs, although you've got to be careful that the subwoofer doesn't end up canceling your stereo signal into mono. It also has a theater pass-through, which is a really nice feature that I, I love about most Macintosh preamps. It's the ability to use this as a two-channel setup, and uh, when you want theater, you, at a push of a button, you can turn on your theater processor, and this amplifier will essentially pass the signal and pretend it doesn't exist, except for the amplifier section powering the left and right speakers. I know it sounds a little complicated, but if, uh, if you ever try to have a good two-channel and a five-channel system in one room, you'll know what the, where the pain comes from. And again, no DAC, no autoformers, and no moving coil facilities.
So who are these products for? Well, I would think the MA252 is essentially for either a starting audiophile, someone that really wants to get into the Macintosh brand, doesn't want to spend a ton of money, but still wants the high quality device that's going to hold its value. At 100 watts, um, at 8 ohms, it's plenty of power to drive most speakers. It's packed with good features and it's got a great aesthetic to it. Um, in this price range and this sort of configuration, you usually get a black box with some knobs on it. At least you're getting some bling out of it, which I'm a big fan of. I listen with my eyes and my ears and things have to look good for me to be happy with my system. Now the uh, MA352 is a big step above that in terms of power and features, plus you get the Macintosh meters. This is for a more established audiophile or someone with a little bit of a deeper budget that maybe does, just wants to get one piece and stick to it. The 352 in particular, which has a really nice sort of aspect ratio and form factor, I really fell in love with the piece and uh, it's a big hit. Whenever someone comes into the shop, they gravitate right to it. So kudos to Mac for sort of expanding the look and, and moving it forward in time. Now, if you're looking for one of these two pieces, I encourage you to visit your local Macintosh dealer. They put a lot of effort and they invest into the brand in both display and inventory. So please, if you're outside of the area, support your local Macintosh dealership. If you're not sure who you are, check with us or check the dealer locator and we'll point you to someone reputable. If you are in the marketplace, uh, please reach us to us at SkyFi Audio. We don't ship these. You've got to come to our store if you want to see what we've got. Give us a call, make an appointment. We'd love to show you and share with you what we've got. Both of these are spoken for. That's a repair we're doing for some friends that broke the headphone jack and this one's already spoken for. So uh, this video is more of a reference than it is an advertisement. But do reach out. We'd love to talk Macintosh. I'd love to hear from you. Tell me which is your favorite integrated amplifier, if you can, in the comments. There's tons of them. They've made them over the years. Uh, we've seen a bunch of them. And uh, I'd love to hear what you think is the best Macintosh integrated that they've made up till this point. Is it the MA2275 or is it something more current? Thanks for watching. I appreciate your time. And, uh, and please leave feedback below. Cheers.